My name is Nekunda Laba. I am a film producer, a film director, a, a screenwriter. I am an actor. I am a political scientist and I am also a film professor. I have my film production company called uh, Labson Business in Congo, which focuses on producing um, Afrocentric films. And I have a film distribution company called Africa Business Distribution, which does the distribution of African films. And uh, I do um, run my film institute called Congo Bizizi Academy, the Pan-African Film Institute, which teaches um, films in, in Africa and, you know, mostly, uh, precisely, I can say, in um, the Big Congo, what are called the Big Congo, this region, uh, which include the Democratic Republic of Congo, Angola, the Republic of Congo, Gabon, Cameroon, and you know, Africa in general. And with my um, film production company, Labson Bizizi Cine Congo, I produced and directed um, many films. And um, I produced and directed um, some short films. Uh, my first um, short film, my first drama um, short film and horror movie, um, it's called uh, The Next, which I produced in 2009. And um, I produced my first, uh, my very first documentary, a short documentary called The Steel Pan, the spiritual instrument of the 20th century, which speaks about the, the, the steel pan musical instrument um, invented in um, Trinidad and Tobago. And um, uh, I produced a short documentary um, about um, the asylum seekers, uh, about the reporting center, the home office reporting center in, in England, in, in London. And uh, I produced my my first um, drama future film called Chéri Bondoué. And I produced um, some documentary future films, um, including um, Kimpa Vita, the mother of the African Revolution, uh, about um, Kimpa Vita, the young woman, um, revolutionary woman from the Kingdom of Congo, who was burned alive with her baby in 1706 because she was fighting against slavery, she was fighting against the looting of, you know, the minerals of the Kingdom of Congo. She was, you know, uh, fighting to rebuild um, the, the Kingdom of Congo. She, she was fighting, to, you know, to revive the African spirituality that existed in the Kingdom of Congo before uh, the 15th century before the Christianity in the Kingdom of Congo. And uh, I co-directed uh, another documentary called Abeti Masikini, Le Combat d'une Femme, uh, Abeti Masikini, The Struggle of a Woman, uh, with uh, my friend Laura Kutika. And uh, I am uh, producing the, the fiction version um, of Kimpa Vita, and I am working on um, you know, various projects as well. Actually, I just released uh, my new documentary uh, about the Kingdom of Congo called Kingdom of Congo in Search of the Destroyed Kingdom, which um, was premiered um, last year um, at um, the Montreal International Black Film Festival in, in, in Canada. And um, yeah, that's all, um, a little bit about me. Why the Kingdom of Congo? Because the, the history 
of the Kingdom of Congo is very fascinating. Uh, the, the, the history of the Kingdom of Congo is extraordinary. And the, 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 the history of the Kingdom of Congo is very rich. That's why um, a four is very important for me to share with the public, the African public, uh, the public from, um, you know, the, the great kingdom of Congo. When I'm talking about the great kingdom of Congo, I'm talking about, um, about the Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm talking about Angola. I'm talking about Gabon. I'm talking about uh, uh, the Republic of Congo. I'm talking about Cameroon. I'm talking about... Uh, you know, this symbolic, um, you know, um, territory of the Kingdom of Congo. But um, let me tell you that the Kingdom of Congo was very huge than that. It was very huge than war uh, people, you know, always referred to. Because the Kingdom of Congo uh, even started in the south uh, of Namibia, near the desert of Kalahari, and it went, you know, up to the to the top, it went to the east side and went up to the top, and then and then the middle, the west and the middle, because the Kingdom of Congo was created in um, different phases, in four phases, as mentioned by uh, many uh, Congo historians. So that's why you know i decided uh, to, to to make this documentary so i can share with the peer, the, the the public um this very fascinating um history of the kingdom of congo and apart from that i am um, a descendant of the kingdom of congo i am a prince of the kingdom of congo and as a film director i think that i have this responsibility to you know to tell our um, our stories you know to promote our history to promote our culture through films through the tools i have so i can use it to be able to promote our stories um, you know to be able to promote our history because the history of the kingdom of congo deserves to be known by the public of africa and the public of the world and so, apart from that, um, when I made my documentary about Kimpavita, I spoke a little bit about the Kingdom of Congo, because you can't, you know, speak about Kimpavita without speaking about the Kingdom of Congo, and you can't speak about the Kingdom of Congo without, you know, citing um, the contribution of uh, Yaya Kimpavita. When I did my documentary about Kimpavita, I didn't get this chance, you know, to um, explore a lot uh, about the Kingdom of Congo. I didn't have the, 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 the chance to ex ex expand, I mean, to expand this, um, this knowledge about the, the Kingdom of Congo. But I thought, you know, doing a documentary focus on the Kingdom of Congo would give me more uh, opportunity you know, to, to broaden this knowledge and share with the public uh, my discovery about the Kingdom of Congo. So these, those are the, my motivations, uh, you know, about this documentary. What is the documentary about? Um, this documentary, Kingdom of Congo in Search of the Destroyed Kingdom, is a documentary about the Kingdom of Congo is an historical documentary, is a travel documentary because I, as a director I am inside this documentary and I, 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 as a descendant of the Kingdom of Congo I'm going to search um, the, 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 the remains of the Kingdom of Congo because the Kingdom of Congo um, no more exists today so we just, you know, we can uh, relate to the Kingdom of Congo today using um, the um, using the the, the, the the historical sites that we we have in in in, in the Kingdom of Congo and uh, that we have in in Banza Congo, for example, um, which was Banza Congo, which was the capital of the Kingdom of Congo, which um, which is today. Uh, in, in Angola, in the province of Zaire, where you can find, um, you know, 
the the museum of Congo Kings, uh, where you can find the, the, the cemetery of Congo Kings, where you can find the the first Christian church built in um, in Sub-Sahara Africa, um, the, the church called Kulumbimbi, which is um, located in, in the city of Mbanza, Congo. And uh, we, we have the tree, uh, Yalanku, we have a lot of things that you, you can find there. So in the documentary, we're going to, to discover those sites. And I'm telling the story because I said it's um, a travel documentary. So we are traveling to those sites and I'm telling the story at the same time. I'm telling the story of you know, the, the origin of the Congo people. I'm talking about the migration of the, the, the same people, the, the people who came from this, um, the center of Africa, from east, the east side of Africa, uh, who went to, to build Ethiopia, and the, 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 the people who went to build Nubia, and the, the same people who went to build uh, Egypt and and the same people went back um, you know to, to, to build um, Zimbabwe and they went further down to build uh, what we call uh, to build the kingdom of Congo starting from uh, the south of Namibia as I mentioned and uh, you know that's what um, we're talking about in the, the documentary so we're talking about this migration and we're talking about um, the, the foundation, the creation of the Kingdom of Congo, which was, you know, created in four phases, as I mentioned earlier. So we're talking about the organization, the political and administrative um, organization uh, in the Kingdom of Congo, of the Kingdom of Congo. And, you know, because in what people don't know about the Kingdom of Congo, we we had the political organization so we had kings you know in the kingdom of congo we had the governors in the kingdom of congo we had um, our territories you know divided uh, we, we 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 had um cities we had provinces because the kingdom of congo was divided into provinces and we we, we had ministers you know advisors and etc so the the, the kingdom was well organized and developed um, before even you know when we met with European people and we, we we're talking about the education system that existed in the kingdom of Congo because a lot of people don't know about it that we had schools in the kingdom of Congo we're talking about um, you know the, the money um, you know the, the the economy of the kingdom of Congo we're talking about the money for example the city of Rwanda, which is currently in, 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 in Angola, um, the capital of Angola, uh, the city of Rwanda was part of the Kingdom of Congo as well, and it was the economical point uh, of the, the Kingdom of Congo. It was the, the central bank of the Kingdom of Congo where we used to harvest um, you know, the, 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 the manual that we call um, in Kikongo Mbongo. Mm -hmm. with um, Lubongo, with Nzimbu, Lutaku, Le Mi Mi the Mintanga, for example. So the, the, the money of the Kingdom of Congo. And we, we, we're talking about this, the, the, the scripture in the, the Kingdom of Congo because he existed as well. We're talking about the architecture in the Kingdom of Congo. We're talking about science, uh, the medicine in the Kingdom of Congo that we had. Um, in the Kingdom of Congo, we we are talking about um, art in 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 the Kingdom of Congo as well, and we we we're talking about our meeting with European people. Um, you know, as when we met with European people, the Kingdom of Congo was already developed, and we we're talking about the spirituality that existed, the very important element. Um, which is the spirituality that existed in the Kingdom of Congo before we meet with European people, before the Christianization of the Kingdom of Congo, before the Christianity in the 15th century in the Kingdom of Congo. We, we had our spirituality, the Congo spirituality, the African spirituality that existed. So we're talking about all of this and we're talking about um, 
you know, a relation with European people, as I said, um, from the 15th century, and we're talking about, um, you know, the, the, the decline of the Kingdom of Congo, which started from, you know, the Christianization of the Kingdom of Congo, are we meeting with uh, European people? We're talking about the invasion of Europe in the Kingdom of Congo. We're talking about the slavery that was, um, you know, imposed in the Kingdom of Congo. And we're talking about the Congo people, you know, who went everywhere around the world to build those great states that you can see today. Um, you know, the Congo people were taken to America, Europe, etc. So, and we, we also, um, you know, speak about um, the, 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 uh, the scramble of the Kingdom of Congo in the, the, the Congo Conference in Berlin in uh, 1885, which was the cause of you know, the, 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 the destruction of the, the Kingdom of Congo. So I can't you know, reveal everything because you, you're gonna get the time to, to watch this documentary and you will learn more about um, the, the Kingdom of Congo. So that's a little bit in summary uh, what the documentary is about. Which kind of sources I, uh, I used? Um, if I have to, to speak about the sources, I used many sources um, to, to be able to, to write this story, to have one story to tell to the public. And to be honest, to, to do this kind of documentary, a documentary uh, about this great kingdom of Congo is not easy because we're talking about centuries ago because you know we 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 we've been talking about before the the creation of the kingdom of congo i'm talking about even the origin of the congo people which is not easy and you know when you have to speak about the kingdom of congo or our kingdoms we can see that we you have many you know information out there and you have many contradictions and in majority um, our history, uh, you know, is, um, was, I can say, was written by European people, by the colonialists, and when they write it, they write it, you know, based on, um, you know, their own vision, um, you know, in, to, to, to be able to, um, to, 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 to divert the attention, uh, even to change some data in terms of the, 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 the vision, the mission of the colonization, because everything they were doing during that period of the colonization were, was based on the need, or you know, was, was, was there in order to, to promote the job they've been doing. So the sources uh, that we, we found, that we learned at school, uh, at schools, etc., mostly they were written by European people. So that's why it is very important to rethink about the, the curriculum, um, you know, in our countries in Africa. So to go back to the sources, um, I use um, mostly the sources from our, you know, Congo historians and, and sociologists and anthropologists. Uh, for example, Mbuta uh, Bachikama Bamampuya Mandwala, who was an historian and a sociologist who wrote books about the, the Kingdom of Congo. And we, we have um, his grandson, uh, Patricio Bachikama, uh, who was writing, uh, who wrote books about the Kingdom of Congo, who was writing about the Kingdom of Congo. We have uh, Mbuta Makisosila. Uh, Mawete Makisosila, who lives in France, who is a, a sociologist uh, who, you know, um, speaks a lot about the Kingdom of Congo, who is writing about the Kingdom of Congo as well. And we, we have some spiritual leaders uh, from the African spirituality, some um, African spirituality movement uh, in, in Congo who um, speak about the Kingdom of Congo as well. And we have, uh, for example, Fumunkusu Kiam Zalampana Nangola, and we have the movement Vuvamu, um, the African religion, the African spirituality, where they speak a lot about the Kingdom of Congo, where I found uh, you know, a lot of information as well. 
so apart from that uh, we, we we did use I did use the oral tradition which we can't neglect because uh, we tend you know when we speak about our issue we tend to neglect the, 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 the traditional I mean the oral tradition but I think it's very important to consider uh, these sources this source of information so that's why uh, I use the oral tradition as well I went to to Manza Congo I visited the city of Manza Congo I spoke with um, traditional authorities of Lumbu and they, they did contribute as well in this documentary and we had we we have um, the guard from the museum of Congo Kings who uh, provided some information as well. So the traditional authorities help us, you know, to visit some sites. And so I use all of that. I put everything together in order to, you know, to, to build the story. I did analyze all the sources in order to have one story which is accurate uh, to be able to, to tell to the public. In terms of the challenges I had uh, while you know making this documentary, um, the the first thing I can say I can probably go back to what I, I said. So it's more about the sources um, because this story um, that I'm telling in this documentary is something that happened you know many centuries ago. So it's not easy to find the the information. Uh, apart from that, yes, we as I said we have. The information out there but we have so many contradictions we have a lot of versions um, written by European people which doesn't match uh, the reality uh, in my opinion which doesn't that match the, the reality of the Kingdom of Congo so I had to you know to, to analyze and I had to explore all of that you know in, in order to, 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 to be able to have something which is accurate to, to, to to tell to the public. So that was the first um, challenge, I can say. And the, the second one um, is in, in the technical side, in the, uh, you know, the creative side as well of this documentary, because at the time of the Kingdom of Congo, we didn't have the photography, we didn't have the film camera and the video camera, etc. It didn't exist. Um, during that period, so it's difficult to have the visual archives to to, to use because this is a story. Uh, so this is a film; it's not a, a book. You know, I have to, to to show to the public. You know, when I'm, I'm I'm telling the story. So to be able to show to the public, I need images. I need to cover this. Um, you know, side of. Um, you know the, the the film which is the big side um the the, the images so it, it wasn't easy to to be able to do it because of the lack of um, the visual archives so uh, th there are some portraits you know out there but it's not enough but uh, luckily with the style i use i mean um, I, I am in the documentary i'm going through um, you know different cities and different you know parts of the kingdom of congo so which help which um helped to, to you know to to have more images um to to be able to to show uh, in this documentary so this is the second challenge i can say and apart from that um you know we 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 had issues um we, we did struggle you know, financially as well because we didn't have you know the fund we didn't raise any funds um, you know from any uh, organization any institution uh, that's you know uh, finance the film uh, that finance films we didn't have um, uh, uh, any you know countries from the the kingdom of Congo uh, which help us you know to raise funds uh, w w w which funded this documentary we didn't get this opportunity so we produce it I produce it with the small amount of budget the small amount of money uh, that we you know we had in in the same way as we did with my uh, other documentary Kimpa Vita the mother of the African revolution which was self-funded 
and with this documentary that was the, the same issue that was the same case so which is not easy it's not helping um, you know to to be able to to do the the, the work um, you know in, in, in good conditions so that's why it's very important to remind to our you know African leaders uh, you know the, the the importance of um, of films of the cinema in our society you know because through uh, films we can promote our countries through films we can promote our culture through films we can promote our history like we're doing with our documentaries with our fiction films so many countries uh, in the world so they're using this tool this very powerful tool like cinema film um, in order to, to promote the culture, we have you know the United States of America, USA with Hollywood. They do the same thing. They promote their country, they promote their cities, and they promote their culture through films. Today, people are dreaming about US. You know, they have the American dream that you know they always sell to us. So they do it through films. They do it through Hollywood films. You know, today if people, um, you know, want African people, they want to go to America, they're dreaming about living in America or visiting America, it's because of films, it's because of what they're watching through films. And uh, if we speak um, about some countries like um, China, for example, they did the same thing in the 90s. So they promoted their country uh, through films using martial arts films that we've been watching in the in the nineties. So th th that's promoting the image of of China as well. And we have um, like um, the country like India, for example. They did the same thing. They are doing the same thing with their you know uh, film industry called Bollywood. So they are promoting the the Indian culture through films which is very important, which is very um, interesting. And we, we, we have like, you know, um, you, you, the, the European countries as well, even the United Kingdom, they do the same thing with the film like James Bond. And so that's what uh, our leaders have to consider. You know, they have to, 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 to be able to, 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 to provide some funds for, for filmmakers, they have to support the film industry so we can do the same thing, we can even do better than that. We can promote our culture, we can promote our you know, history, our countries using films as well. It's, a, it's not only, I can say, it's not only about the authorities, you know, but we, we, we have individuals in Africa, in our countries, in Congo, in Angola, etc. We have money, we have a lot of money, we can invest in film as well. So here we're not talking about only giving the donation, but we're talking about investing because, you know, the film generates a lot of money. Films generate a lot of money in, in the economy of countries like US, for example. So you can invest in films and you can get your money back. You can even earn more than what you invested. So it's not only about the government, but I, we have the responsibility as individuals to, to support our film industry by investing, for example, as I said. And apart from that, you can give your donation as well to support the film industry and the African film industry. And the, the, the other way of you know, supporting our industry is by you know, consuming our films, by watching our films, by attending film screenings, you know, by buying films online or on DVDs, etc. That's the way as, you know, um, the, uh, uh, as the public, that's the way you can support um, our film industry because from your contribution by you know, buying films, buying tickets, etc., it will help, you know, filmmakers to earn some money to be able to, to make their films. So what's the lesson that people can get from this documentary? I mean, 
we have many lessons to learn from um, this documentary about the Kingdom of Congo. I mean, the, the first one I can say is, I can say is um, the proud, you know, is being proud of our history, being proud of our culture, being proud of us, you know, because through this documentary, you will learn the reality, the truth about our past. You will learn the truth about our history. And from, from that, you would be proud of yourself. You'd be proud of who, of who we were in the past. And that will give you, uh, you know, um, this kind of courage to be able to do more and think of what our ancestors did. Because as, as I said, the, the, the Kingdom of Congo was uh, well organized. The Kingdom of Congo was, was developed when we, we met with European people. So from that, you can build the pride and uh, uh, as well as you, you can get the strength to be able to, 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 to build the, the future of Africa. Well, in, in terms of the calendar um, of the distribution of this film, uh, the, the film was released um, last year. We did the, the, the world premiere at the Montreal International Black Film Festival, which is one of the biggest film festivals in, you know, in the world in terms of you know, Pan-African films, in terms of black films. And it, it, it happened last year um, in, uh, at the end of September, the beginning of October uh, 2020. In, in Canada, in Montreal, and the festival was virtual. And uh, we, we did um, the, the premiere in Cameroon um, at the, the film festival uh, Ecran Noir. And uh, that was in um, November 2020. And we, we did um, the, the premiere um, as well um, in, in Benin at um, the International um, Digital Film Festival of Cotonou in, in Benin in December of uh, 2020, last year. And uh, we, we, we did the premiere, uh, we, we did the screening um, this year in March uh, 2021 um, at uh, Ottawa um, Black Film Festival in Ottawa in, in Canada and uh, we, we just um, did the, 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 the premiere in Angola, so the Angolan premiere uh, in Luanda at the Mediateca de Luanda which happened on the 26th of uh, June uh, 2021, so it just happened um, just a, a, a few weeks ago. So, but apart from that, um, in terms of the future, we are planning to, to do the premiere, uh, to do screenings in many cities um, around the world and in, in Europe. And we, we, we're planning to do the same thing in Congo, to, to do the premiere in Congo, uh, in, in Kinshasa, and then in other cities. But uh, in Angola, for example, we just did one screening, that was the premiere, but we, we are planning to do more than that. So in the future, we, 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 we go back to do um, the screening in, in Banza Congo, in the city of Banza Congo, and then we will do the tour in many provinces in Angola because there is a huge demand. And um, apart from that, so in Europe, for example, we, we will do the screening. In, in, in the UK, in London, in Birmingham, Manchester, and many cities. And we, we, we're thinking to do the premiere in, in, in France as well, in Paris, and you know, in Belgium, Brussels, in, you know, in Germany, in Switzerland, and in, in any country um, in, in Europe. So that's what we're thinking. And why not having the, the documentary in cinema so everyone can go um, and, and watch it. 
and yeah and we have film festivals coming as well so we we, are, we have a very busy calendar and uh, i must say that you know we were supposed to do all of this since last year but our calendar was affected by um this pandemic of coronavirus so we were not able to do the screenings because many you know cinemas were closed so that's why our calendar was affected thank you very much Once upon a time in the heart of Africa, in the middle of the world along the Atlantic Ocean, existed an empire of great lakes, rivers, lions, leopards, precious stones and civilized people. The empire existed a hundred years before the 15th century and was developed, powerful, strong and prosperous. It will be destroyed later by European invasion, slavery, civil wars and looting of its minerals. It is also known as the Kingdom of Congo. Congo, the Andorti. Kingdom of Congo, in search of the destroyed kingdom. Congo, the Antortilla. You may have heard about the Kingdom of Congo, but you may not fully comprehend the magnificence of this once great African empire. My team and I will take you on a journey and we will introduce you to the great Kingdom of Congo. Congo, 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 Congo,